Some of you may have noticed the rather messy state of our rabbitry and quail area in previous videos. That's because I generally clean out this particular space about four times a year. It's absolutely time to do that. And it works out well because it's also time to amend the garden. So I can stick the quail poop in the compost heap, but the rabbit poop can go straight in the raised beds. So it's not a very fancy, high-tech cleaning system that I have here. I just have a whole bunch of five gallon buckets and a shovel. The floor in our barn is dirt. And so all of the liquids seep into the ground. However, all of the solid stuff, the hay, the manure, some of the food scraps does pile up on top and that makes it easy to collect nice, dry, usable manure. See, it does not take long to fill one bucket. All of this poop is going to go a really long way in the garden. You know, I kind of wonder if one of my pigs is in heat. I think she might be. I noticed that pearl on her sides yesterday and today, it looked like she had some really rumpled hair. Now the past couple days has been really hot here in Kentucky. So I didn't get too excited about the possibility that that was signs that she had been mounted. I did just recently have to give their pigs their pool. And I wondered if maybe she just got her hair wet and then laid down for a nap and then it dried funny. You know, we've all gone to bed with wet hair and woken up and regretted it. <laughs> but I think I saw him try to mount her. So I'm definitely gonna write this date down and keep a really close eye on Pearl because she might've gotten bred in the last couple days. My pigs are a year old next month, so it is about that time for them. They should be really interested in breeding. So today I'm amending one of the U-shaped beds that we have in our raised bed garden. And this particular U-shaped bed has had a problem with some soil compaction. One of the ways that I'm going to combat that is adding some gypsum. So gypsum is calcium and it says it also provides sulfur to the plants. Calcium and sulfur are gonna help with some of the root stimulation and production. And it's also gonna help prevent conditions like blossom end rot that can happen on some nightshades. This is a 40 pound bag. On the back, it says you should treat about 100 pounds per every thousand square feet. Each one of these U-shaped raised bed gardens is about 60 square feet. If my brain is doing well today with math, which it doesn't always, I should use about six pounds for this whole bed. The bag also warns that this this gypsum could cause skin irritation, so I'm going to use this little seedling tray as a scoop. This particular raised bed too has dealt with some rodent problems. I actually planted a whole bunch of carrots this past fall and I didn't get to harvest any of them because the rodents ate them all. I think I read somewhere where gypsum is problematic for rodents if they eat it, so this is a win-win for my garden. Now, along with the six pounds of gypsum, I have six buckets of rabbit manure. I think you're gonna be able to notice this on camera. I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer as well. But you may notice that the rabbit manure has like a white fuzzy mold on top of it. This is super awesome stuff. This is one of the reasons that rabbit manure is so awesome as a cold manure for the garden. This particular mold breaks down the manure and it's able to then make the nitrogen and other great nutrients inside the manure more more bioavailable to your plants. So if your rabbit manure has this white looking mold on it, no worries, that's awesome. This particular mold, when you've got a lot of it, it helps contribute to this really glorious earthy smell. Now, rabbit urine is also white, but that smells worlds different. So I think you're gonna know the difference. See her funny hairdo? It's like both sides, here, in here. 
Now, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, but she doesn't look like she's been bred. I know with goats, sometimes you can look for something called muck butt, and it is what you think it is. And I don't see anything on her back end that looks like there's really been any sort of recent activity. Habu. Doesn't mean that nothing happened yesterday though. She seems like she's not super interested in his advances today. I did see him try to mount her. <laughs> test you can do. <laughs> if it seems like your pig may be in heat, a test that you can do is push down on their back and if they squeal at you and run away, it means that they're at least not in a standing heat. With a standing heat, they should just stand there and really tolerate you having put some pressure on their back because that means that they're receptive to being mounted. So I'm not sure what to think, but I am getting a little bit excited <laughs> and anxious. <laughs> So sometimes if you keep pigs together from when they're real little and you, they grow up into maturity together, they can develop more of a roommate relationship rather than like a breeding mate relationship. And that may be going on. I am aware that there may come a time where I have to separate Bobo from the girls in order to create some separation anxiety, if you will, and uh, have him longing for them for more than just companionship, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna give him until about June or July, and if I haven't noticed that the girls are bred or anything by then, uh, I am gonna have to move him out for a little while. Ah. Hey, Morris. Come here, baby. Hi, honey. You looking around, my dear. She's avoiding me. This is normal behavior for Christine. I think I'll, one of the ways I'll know that Christine is for sure in labor is when she lets me approach her and pet her while I am also in the pasture. Generally, she lets me come up to her and pet her from the other side of the fence, but if I'm in here, she's way far away. Huh. I think she's got multiples in there. She looks a lot bigger than Bunny Hop did. Huh, do you have babies? Ooh. She might be thinking about coming up to me. I did go back for another load of rabbit manure, so we have a total of 12 buckets in this raised bed. So now I'm gonna to top everything off with a balanced soil. This particular miracle Grow bagged soil that I have is designed for in-ground gardens. And because these raised beds are just open to the bare ground and the bottom and have lots of drainage, I'm comfortable using this particular soil in this bed. Sometimes when you use a garden soil in a pot, the salts and minerals and things can build up and actually be kind of harmful to your plants. This bed has really awesome drainage, so I'm not worried about it. And it was a lot cheaper than the raised bed specific soil. My husband actually built these beds in 2020. And when we filled them, we used like a modified Hugel culture method. We actually had a really big tree fall down by our pond. A part of the cleanup was making ourselves some pretty nice stacks of firewood, but also putting some logs at the bottom of this bed here. I really wanted to have a nice deep raised bed, but filling a two foot deep raised bed is very expensive if you do it even with just topsoil purchased from like a landscaping company. So one way that you can really, really help lighten the cost of that is if you can find things like logs, sticks, and other organic materials that will break down and place them at the bottom of the bed and then place your soils, manures, amendments on top of that. Inevitably those things go ahead and break down over time and you've got to top it off but that's kind of true no matter what you fill your garden bed with. But lastly I've got to go retrieve my mulch. So this is what I bought. 
in theory, this bag of pine straw is about the equivalent of two bales of regular straw. I'm a little bit suspicious of whether or not that's true, but we'll see. We live in a very windy environment here, and my hope with this pine straw is that it will stay put better than like baled straw would. Also, I have some concerns about our local straw containing things like glyphosate. Glyphosate is Roundup. It's a broadleaf plant killer. And that's the last thing I want to put in my garden too. I am a little worried about this blowing away. <laughs> So we're starting to lose some light here, but that's the finished result. So this 60 square foot raised bed is ready for the spring and summer garden. If you're curious about why I use miracle Grow soil instead of something organic, I'm gonna leave this video here. Pig pig!